Hello. Today, it's raining. I forgot to record me ordering the drink, but it was kind of a fail anyway. I was gonna get the Irish cream cold brew because I like love anything Irish cream, but they didn't have any more left. So I just got the vanilla cold foam, vanilla cream cold brew, I mean. Um, and I asked for extra cold foam because if not, it's just like the cold brew is really intense. But the bubbles look weird on this, first of all. Is it like frozen? Look at the bubbles on that. Does that look weird? But anyway, they gave me so much cold foam that it's literally, can you see it? It's like coming out of the top. I don't know if it's, you can tell. Like girl. Mm. It literally, their cold foam tastes like vanilla ice cream. Mm. But she asked if I needed a straw and I said no before I saw that the cold foam was like spilling out. So now I kind of regret not getting a straw because I could really use to like mix this. I don't understand why the cold foam isn't like mixed in from the beginning though. By the time you get to the bottom of the drink, that shit tastes like dirt. Let's give it a good taste. Damn. Even though I'm drinking the top where all the cold foam is, I feel like it's still not sweet enough. Okay. I think this is decent lighting. Um. Hey, how's it going? What's up if you're new here? What's good if you've been here before? Uh, I guess today, I think of these videos as almost like a recap of my life that, you know, one day I'll be able to watch all of them and remember all of the good times and where I was at mentally and, you know, just be able to remember because I think it's almost like, it's like a video journal, right? Instead of writing things down. I'm saying it, I'm showing it, and yeah, so that being said, this video is going to be kind of a life update, so let's just get into it. First of all, I have now, if you can hear the rain again, I'm sorry, It's. I think it sounds kind of nice, but I've now been back from Mexico for about two weeks, and... It's just crazy. Like, be, in those two weeks that I've been back, I have planned so much travel. For for friends, but also for work. It's just been... It's been insane. I've been planning so much to visit family in the summer. So, I have just so many plans coming up. And I'm really excited about them. But I'm also like... Ooh, I need to take advantage of the time that I am home to really like hone into my routine and you know get the things that I want done done while I am home if that makes sense so like for instance when I travel sometimes I work out if there's a gym or you know or I'll just try to eat better for the most part that's not really the case so when I'm home I really want to take advantage and be eating really good be going to the gym consistently so that you know when I'm on vacation or when I'm traveling I'm not thrown off my game too much because I've been consistent up until that point if that makes sense so I've just been really trying to hone into those things being in Vegas is just so crazy though like people are always you're always gonna find people who are down to go out and I do go out when I'm in Vegas. I have like a group of friends that I and I love going out with them. Vegas residents don't really go out to the strip unless they're in the scene, unless they're in that industry, like they're a dancer or they're a club promoter or they're a bottle girl. You're probably not going to see people who live in Vegas other than those people on the strip unless the other exception is if they have friends or family visiting fr from out of town then you go to the strip if you live in vegas because you know that's where all the tourists want to go 
but for the most part vegas residents i would say at least it's just my experience and you know what other people have told me too everybody goes to downtown instead so fremont you know all the bars around there and they're not there's a good mix i feel like of dive bars but there's also like bars that are damn near clubs they just aren't as intense as a club you know not as big not as strict about people getting in not as expensive <laughs> but why do i still have my seatbelt on girl anyway so yeah so so i'll go out with the with friends and we'll just go to downtown um but when i first moved here i i went to the clubs and i went to the strip a lot more and i do have something to say about it okay and like this i think this kind of ties into like the life updates because it, i feel like it shows how much i've grown i guess since i first moved here and how much i've learned and changed i guess when i first moved here i was itching to go to the clubs i probably posted in a lot in some of the videos you probably heard me say like i just want to go out like i just want to meet people to go out with blah, blah blah and i did i ended up meeting people to go out with and i went out so much like people would i would literally get invited out on like a tuesday and i'd be like okay let's go and the reality is for the people that are in that industry they are literally nocturnal like they stay awake at night and then they go to bed when the sun rises like a ton of people in that whole industry like it's a nightlife industry and that is they're living at night like they're awake at night and you know differences make the world go round. like we need people who are willing to stay up but for somebody who works during the day, like myself, during the week, I can't be staying up during the day and at night. Like, I will literally go crazy. So, I was just being a yes man. Because, of course, when you don't say yes to plans, you have this fear that you're not going to get invited to the next thing. You know, you turn down one thing, you're worried that the next time they're not even going to invite you. And that was my fear. I'm like, these are fresh friends, new friends. If I say no they might just take me off the list as far as like people to invite to the functions. So I was pressed about it. I was, you know, like I, I never wanted to say no. I always wanted to say yes. And I did have fun when I would go out, but not, I'll get into how I feel about the club scene. Not, not as much as I thought in the moment, like not as much fun as I thought at that time, you know? Anyway. So, and, and also for context, like before this, I lived in Davis and I have been clubbing before, you know, I've been to Vegas and been clubbing on vacation. I've been clubbing in San Francisco. I've been clubbing in San Diego. I've been clubbing in freaking uh, England. You know what I mean? Like I've been clubbing before. It wasn't my first time, but I had lived in Davis right before this. And so when I did go clubbing, as I said, I was on vacation and it was always like such a blast. So I was so excited to like have that at my fingertips and be able to do it whenever I wanted that every opportunity that I got, I was saying yes and excited to go. It wasn't like I was being forced or that it was just I didn't want to get invited or I didn't want to be blocked from being invited to the next things. It was also because I wanted to go, you know, that part of it did fall on me and just like wanting to pop out. And, um, and so I was just saying yes to everything and just going out all the time and a couple things. First of all, it loses the magic when you go all the time. It gets so repetitive. Like the club scene just gets so repetitive. You go, you're drinking, you're, they start playing the same songs that you heard like two nights ago and unless there's like a special dj performing but girl if you're going on a tuesday like i was like there's no special dj performing it's just the fuck it's just you know the same shit so you're dancing it's fun you're like small talking with people and 
that you're never going to see again probably and then you go home and then you get home at like 4am and you're exhausted and the next day you have to wake up and go to work if you're me and you're hungover and yeah so besides the repetitiveness there's a certain culture and I don't know if it's in every city or you know I can't speak for everybody's experience but my experience with the club scene here in Vegas as somebody who lives in Vegas is it's very it feels very transactional when you go out so the way I would go out And this is, okay, disclaimer, I'm not going to never pop out to the clubs again. I will probably end up at the clubs, like maybe even sometime soon, you know. Um, and I probably will go about it the same way that I used to go about it, right, in the fall when I was popping out all the time. The difference is, it's a once in a while thing now. Like I can't, I it's just not in me anymore to like do it every weekend. I just can't do it. I don't even think I was showing the camera like I wasn't vlogging every time I went to the club because I was just going so often and it just like I said it was so repetitive it lost its magic it's not entertaining for me or for the you know for a video when you're going all the time there's nothing new to show you know so anyway the culture it was so it's very transactional so the way I would go and the way a lot of girls go out here is that I can't speak for the guy experience, but for girls, you can get with a club promoter and the club promoter has this relationship where their company has this relationship with the club. Club promoter works for a company that has a relationship with the club, usually multiple clubs on the strip. And their deal is like, well, if your club promoters can bring in this many girls, we'll give you guys a table because it looks good for the club to have girls in there, right? Attractive, like girls getting turned up, whatever, because then guys will come in and want to buy a table and want to, you know, spend money in the club to flirt with the girls, right? It's super, like, it's so, when I say it out loud, it's so cringe. Like, it really is, like, super cringe. Um, but that's just how shit is still, you know, it's just like that. Like it, it's just, that's just still how it is. It's still, it's still like that. So just giving it to you how it is. I didn't make the rules. I'm not a hundred percent happy with the rules. As I said, this is the reason, one of the reasons I like really don't go anymore is because it's so transactional and it's transactional because of that system right so i was going out and i'm thinking every time i go out maybe i know one girl there from the last time or a couple girls from the last time but for the most part the girls are always changing and then the guys are consistent because they're the promoters bringing in the girls they occasionally will like bring in guys too who want to buy a table but they always have a big group of girls with them because that's like you know the bulk part of their job or whatever <clears throat> so the guys are always the same so in my mind I'm like all right maybe I can at least make close guy friends right like maybe I'll once in a while I'll get a girlfriend that I recognize you know and we can kind of like establish a relationship but at least the guys are always consistent I can be friends with them but because of the nature of the job it was like they would invite me out uh, for example like I had a couple of close guy friends who were promoters and I do consider them friends like at the end of the day like I would say that they're friends but because the majority of our hangouts were drinking and going out it felt like the only reason they were inviting me was because that they knew I could clean up well and be a pretty girl and earn them money you know and like <laughs> It's transactional because yes, like they're getting something out of me, but at the end of the day, yeah, when I go in, they're getting me free entry. They're getting me, they're, they're getting bottles for us, right? So they're getting us alcohol for free, which in a club would run you like $18 a shot at least. So it is two way, you know, it's not just like getting pimped out, 
but at the same time it's like that's not what I wanted like it wasn't worth it to me because I don't need to go to the club and I don't need to if it was once in a while then it's like that's a perk I know how to run it I know how to you know do all that get in for free but when it's all the time it's like I wasn't doing it to turn up I was doing it to make friends and so if it doesn't feel like I'm making real friends then it doesn't feel worth it you know for me at least I don't know so so I started to say no and be like you know but if you're doing anything else <laughs> if you're not going to the club uh I'd love to kick it and I realized that even the hangouts with this group would literally start at like eight they'd say let's link at eight and then it, nobody would get there to like nine 9 p.m. and I'm like and we're not even going out to the club it would be like to watch a movie or to do this midweek I'm like girl no <laughs> not I like not I I could I can't stay awake that late and then on top of that I don't want to you know stereotype anybody who works in that industry but at least this group that I would hang out with Everything that we did involved alcohol. We would literally go to see a movie and somebody would pick up a couple bottles before we went to go see the movie. I'm like, the movies. Like, I've gone to the movies after smoking. I guess that's like a different vibe, but like drinking before the movie? Like, bro, we can't be rowdy in the movie theater, you know? Like, what? I don't know not my vibe like anything we did involved alcohol and was really really late at night so again i'm not trying to say that this is the case for everybody who works in those types of industries but at least for the group that i was in and the things that i see across groups that include nightlife people um especially pro club promoters for some reason i follow a ton on instagram because once you know one i feel like at least in this city, you st <laughs> friends of friends, bro. Like all of a sudden, you almost know everybody. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just like all the time. Like, and then okay, the other thing, another reason why I felt like it was really hard to make friends with the girls, besides the fact that they, um, you know, aren't always the same girls showing up, is that. There's this like culture of competition almost when you're in there. It's like, I don't know if everybody's trying to ask us to the promoters because they're the ones who got us in for free, but like the girls are all like flexing on each other by like who can shake ass the most and like who can be the most like sexual and like ratchet and i'm down girl you've seen me shake my ass you've seen me be a little ratchet like i am with the shits like don't get me wrong i am with the shits but i'm with the shits when it's you know we're hyping each other up and it's fun not like like i'm better than you or trying to like claim a man i'm like no <laughs> nah nah first of all nobody here at least me myself and i are not competing for these promoters like girl no no they're damn near pipping us out why am i gonna be competing for their attention absolutely not um I'm sure there's good club pro it's not even about their personality but it's like I'm not here to I would I'm not even there to get any man like I'm just there to like make friends and have fun dance yeah let's dance but why does it have to be a competition I'm not trying to flex on you like I'm just not I'm not trying to be the prettiest girl in the bunch I'm just not and it just felt like everybody was trying to be that way there were you know occasional occasional exceptions but it felt like every girl was just trying to be the cutest you know the prettiest the sexiest whatever um and so because of that it was like hard to talk to people and hard to be friends with them because they everybody has like a superiority complex you know and kind of same with the guys like the guys were just like the promoters would be like multiple guy promoters and they're all trying to be like the flyest and like 
flex how many girls they brought in. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Weird flex, but I. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Okay, because maybe it sounds like hypocritical because when I'm with like, if I'm with like a group of my pretty girlfriends, like I'm like, hey, like you see us, ah, you know? But it's not like we're better than you type shit. You know, it's more like we're lit. What's up? So I don't know how to explain it. Maybe I'm doing a shitty job at explaining it, but it's just a different energy. It's a different vibe. It's less comp competitive and more like community. Like we together on this, you know? So yeah, I mean, when we pull up to the club, with that you know promoter type group it always feels like there's like clicks within the group and it's like we pulled up together though <laughs> why am i why is this why what nah nah anyway that's just my opinion i did not expect to go on that tangent but i don't even know why i went that way i guess just to say that Maybe because, okay, in my last vlog, you guys saw I went out, went out to downtown with the gang. The gang was reunited um, and it was so much fun. And I feel like it just reminded me of the difference between downtown and the club scene and why, you know, I, we were out until, we were out till like four and then we came back to my place and smoked two blunts on the balcony, like, and we were up to like 6 or 7 a.m. Like the sun was out, you know? So it can be a long night. But the difference was it was on the weekend. The previous weekend I hadn't gone out. I didn't go out during the week. And when I did go out and we went to the bars. And the, the scene, the setting was just so much more positive. You know, like nobody in the group was trying to compete. Or there was just good energy, you know? And... So there's just a big difference between how I used to go out in Vegas and how I go out now. And I don't know. I think that it's really easy. I see a lot of girls and I met a lot of girls that I now follow on Instagram who just mo moved out here around the time I moved out here, honestly, or like a little before or a little after. I know like I, at least a handful of girls and I can tell that they got stuck in that club scene. And maybe they didn't, they're not stuck. Maybe they do really enjoy it and, like, that's their scene. But it just seems like not an uplifting or fun scene to be in. The highs of that lifestyle just seem very sh short-lived. And I don't, it's just not for me, I guess. But anyway. I'm excited for it. I know it's literally raining, but I'm so excited for it to get warm. I think today is going to be the last coldy, coldy, cold day for a while. And, um, and so like by the end of this week, I think I'm going to be able to be working by the pool, which mm, I'm excited about. I don't want to talk about all my travel, but I'll talk about one. At the end of this month, I'm going up to Northern California. Davis. I did this two little bun thing. I'm just like, girl, excuse me. I don't even, what even happened? Anyway, ow. <laughs> At the end of this month, I am going to Northern California. So Sacramento, Davis, SF. I'll be touching all of those little spots. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be seeing friends that I haven't seen in a long time. Friends, also some friends that came for New Year's and my brother. So I'm super hyped. Uh, it's I'm only going for a weekend. And on Saturday, I'm supposed to... So I'm going to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On Saturday, I'm spending the day or at least half the day in SF. Um, and I'm going to be getting a tattoo. I'm so excited. My friend's going to give me another tattoo. She already gave me one. She gave me the one on my back, which I do have a vlog from, I think I got it last February. Um, so 
if you want to like dig deep like you could see that i got my first tattoo from her and so yeah like a year later i'm getting another one from her so that's gonna be like at the end of the day on saturday but i think my friend char and soph are gonna come with me um and so we might spend you know the beginning half of the day in the city exploring or whatever uh but then so that only leaves friday and sunday for me to link with any other people that are up there including my brother i want to spend like a good amount of time with him so it's gonna be a crazy like quick trip but i'm gonna squeeze in so many things and i'm really excited about it so there's that i can't believe we are like halfway through march literally what like wh where is time going this it's just flying by it is flying flying by like i feel like i planned this trip so long ago and it's here you know it's so crazy but um on a more serious less fun this coffee is hitting i can tell because my stomach hurts and damn i haven't even drank half of it Starbucks cold brew did not come to play. I can feel my brain like tsh. I'm gonna get a good pump in after this though. This is gonna be my fuel. I never drink coffee or take pre-workout before the gym. My heart rate already goes up when I'm working out. Like it's already doo -doo 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 -doo. if you added pre-workout or coffee to that, I feel like my heart might just stop. Like I <laughs> or I'm, I might have like an anxiety attack in there. Which is why I have taken pre-workout one time before my friend gave me some. And I really thought I was going to die. And then, but I've, I've, I don't know if I've done coffee. At least not cold brew. I've definitely done like a watered down moment, coffee moment before the gym. As like an afternoon pick me up. But a Starbucks cold brew girl, I'm kind of scared. I feel like it might be a lot. We'll see though. There's like cold foam on the top that I want to get in the coffee, but <laughs> my technique, girl, this is the best part. Get in there. It's definitely working. I just have to be really strategic about it not spilling everywhere. Anyway, on a more serious note. As I was going to say before I got on the gym tangent. Um, I'm not even really ready to, to talk about this all the way. But... As you probably tell from the lack of this person's appearance in my recent videos I am single now and I'm not really ready to get into that I think eventually I will because I learned a lot of like critical lessons through that experience through that relationship and through the ending of that relationship um but yeah it's it's kind of too fresh right now but what i will say is that yes i'm sad about it i am sad about it and it like sometimes it's just it keeps me up at night and it's awful and it makes me cry and it'll just consume my thoughts but now now that it happened i feel overall okay with the decision and with where i'm at now i feel like I am meant to be single right now. And that doesn't mean that I'm meant to be like hoeing it 
out here in the streets because that's literally not I'm not that's not what I'm doing and that's not really what I want to be doing but I think this is just my opinion and just for myself you know everybody's different But I don't want to be comfortable yet is a big part of it. That's not the whole reason why things ended. But I, I think that's something that I've re realized after the fact that has been really important for me is that. And a benefit of it, I guess, of being alone is that I'm not super comfortable. Um, I'm, I'm not tempted to be just chilling all the time you know when I'm by myself I work a lot more and I'm in my early 20s like I'm trying to make this bread you know I'm trying to I'm trying to grow across so many areas of my life and for some people being in a relationship allows them to grow you know pushes them to grow more for me it didn't for me, I got comfortable. And again, that's not the reason it ended. But that's one benefit that I'm seeing of now, you know, after the fact being alone is that I'm working a lot more. And yeah, like I said, I have trips planned, I have vacations planned. But even that, even those, you know, they're downtime, but I'm planning you know, trips for work. I'm planning trips with new friends. And both of those, those contribute to growth. You know, meeting new people, making new connections. Um, yeah. I guess, um, you know, and the thing is about anything that I say is that I can recognize that there's, and I can even present that devil's advocate argument to that. Like, oh, well, well like what I just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I can spend money on vacations and make new connections through those vacations. It's like, but for some people, they would rather spend that money on a vacation with that one person. And that's, that's at the end of the day, not where I'm at. You know, that it says a lot about how I feel if I would rather spend my money and meet new people and, you know, it sounds really fucked up, but yeah, it's just where I'm at. I know that in a lot of, a lot of times people are like that, like really basic excuses, like, it's not you, it's me. But for real, like it is me in this situation. I am the reason that it's not ongoing. And because I'm not ready. Like I I don't want that right now. Um And a part of me for a while like really wished that I did want that. Because shit would just be easier. It Shit would just make more sense. <laughs> but I can't deny how I feel. I can't lie to myself. Because that would not just be doing myself an injustice. But also them. It would be doing them a disservice. You know, like I'm faking it. And that's not fair to them either. So. <clears throat> and also, like, I recognize that... It's kind of a selfish decision, you know? But that being said, again, I don't feel that bad about it. Like, I feel bad about it, but I don't regret it. Because the reality is, your time on this earth, not forever. I feel like you just have to be a little bit selfish when it comes to relationships like don't settle if that's not what you want in this moment it's like the way I feel about that relationship 
is like I'm in a desert and I'm dying of thirst like I'm so thirsty I, all I can think about is water and somebody hands me a beautiful steak just like the juiciest most delicious steak you've ever seen crusted edges the whole thing it's like that is a damn that is a damn good looking steak you best believe i'm gonna want to eat that steak but right now i'm so fucking thirsty i can't even think about eating the steak the steak isn't appetizing to me at all because I'm fucking thirsty. I just, that's just not what I need right now. I don't need that. I don't even want it because I don't, I need something else. You know, like I, I need water. So yeah, that's just kind of where I'm at. Um, I recognize how amazing that steak is and how lucky I would be to eat it. But in this moment, I can't, I just can't do it. I can't even force myself. So. Yeah. That's just what it is. I recognize that it's selfish, but first of all, you have to be selfish in this life a little bit. You know? You just do. Because you don't want to push through and then regret such a big thing in your life you know it's just no and then second if you're not a little bit selfish when it comes to things like relationships you might end up resenting the other person and that's that ends up being selfish anyway because that other person deserves more than your resentment you know they deserve the love that they're giving to you in return Maybe that was super vague, but I'm just trying to do what feels right for me right now. Um, every time I follow my intuition, I talked about this in the last vlog. Every time I, I follow my intuition, even when it's just like a really painful and hard decision to make. When I follow what, you know, my subconscious is telling me, it typically works out. And I have to feel that way about this. So I'm, I, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going with what feels right. I'm freaking 23, dude. Like, if you're in your early 20s, recognize how your fucking frontal lobe, part of your frontal lobe, I think it is, or some part of your brain that's like critical for personality and all this bullshit, isn't even done developing till you're 25. Like, my personality isn't even... Uh, this isn't even who I'm going to be forever. You know what I mean? So how can I pick a forever partner right now when I'm not even my full self yet? You know? Not even that, you know, at 25, you're going to be the same person that you were at 30. Because that's definitely not the case. But do you know what I mean? Like, you're not even done growing physically. How could you be done growing mentally enough to pick a forever person? I mean, but I mean, okay, again, here, the devil's advocate coming out, like, some people are like, well, if you get with the person that you're with at 23, then you guys can grow together, and then you both won't be the people that you initially started out with. It's like, yeah, I guess, you know, you just, my thing is like, and this is just for me, I don't think I can, if I'm growing next to somebody, I don't think I'm growing true to just myself. You know, you're growing with somebody. So they're going to be influencing you. It's not going to be just yourself. You know what I mean? How you would grow if you were on your own. You're growing with somebody. That influences your own growth. And friends do that too, you know. But a partner, somebody that you spend damn near every day with, talking to all day every day, is going to imp impact your growth a lot more than friends that you see once a week and, you know, family and stuff. Yeah, that, that growth that I'm going to experience by just being by myself is going to be a lot different. That's just mine. My... I feel like you have to give a disclaimer with everything nowadays. Like, and I consider myself, you know, like, I, I don't know. That's a whole different tangent. But it's like, why do I have to, why do I feel so inclined to present the other side and defend my own beliefs and my own feelings about shit? It's so crazy. I'm like, 
but that's just me. Like, obviously that's just me. Obviously other people are gonna experience things differently and my way isn't the highway, the right way, but whatever. I'll... Gen Z baby, here we are. <laughs> anyway, okay. I don't think I can keep drinking this. Like, fuck dude. I guess to wrap up what I was just talking about and growth for myself, I want to see how far I can grow as a single unit, as my own person. I want to see how far I can go alone. And that's not to be like, you know, I don't need no man. No. Obviously, I don't need a man. But that's not the reason. Like, I want to see who I'm going to turn out by being alone. You know, like, I want to see who I'm going to be by growing alone. Hopefully that makes sense. This ended up being enough sugar. It's not too intense. It like mixed in well. So the if you get the vanilla cream cold brew, definitely get extra cold foam. Tell them to run it up. Um, because it makes the drink so much better. And yeah, let's go get a good gym session. And I feel like it's gonna stain my teeth. I feel like cold brew in particular is just like this teeth staining serum. <laughs> Ew. You know, amongst all the chaos, know that in my day to day, when I am home, like I'm reflecting a lot, you know, I'm thinking a lot about myself. I feel like that sounds bad, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I'm thinking a, a, a lot about where I'm going in life, who I'm supposed to be, who I want to be, what steps I need to take to get there. And I think that living alone and being alone, at least for a little part of your life, is so critical to to being an independent person and to just really learning about yourself. Because up until this point, like, I... You know, I've been in relationships, but also, even when I was single, I was either, you know, back home with my family, or I was living in houses with other college kids, um, up to, like, six people in a house. So it's like, you're not really alone, you know? If you, if you can, if you ever have the chance to just be alone in your, in your life, like, I would say take it. It's scary, it's hard, but I think it's worth it. That is all for now. I will see you in my next one. Bye.